Hi, my name is Tia Ward and this is my series of Make Me Up. Today's video is all about holiday skincare and explaining SPF to you guys because it's a minefield and I want you to understand it. Okay, so first things first, SPF. How does it affect your tan? What is it? How do you use it properly? Now, SPF actually refers to the level of protection in a cream. So, for example, we've got here SPF 50. Now, this is a broad spectrum sunscreen, so it protects you from UVA and UVB rays. Usually, SPF only refers to UVB, which is the ultraviolet rays from the sun, which cause burning and sort of skin surface damage. UVA, however, causes much deeper damage, cell damage, so you have to make sure that whatever you're using has a broad spectrum and covers both UVA and UVB, otherwise you're leaving yourself open to damage. All right, so now to tackle the number next to the SPF. So for example, this product is factor 30, SPF 30. Now this means that, for example, on myself, it takes me maybe an hour to burn. So if I apply SPF 30 properly, which means a whole tablespoon for each limb, rubbed in properly 15 minutes before sun exposure, I can spend 30 hours, so 30 times the amount of time I would burn with nothing on my skin in the sun. Now you understand the number, I'd like to really, really make sure you understand that the level of SPF has no bearing on how deep your tan gets. I wear Factor 50, usually from Kiehl's. Um, this is their activated sun protector and it's an ultra light sunscreen, but it's fact 50 and I cover myself in this stuff and I'm still pretty brown. Now I've explained the basics to you guys, I'll talk you through some of the things that I use in the summer for my skincare regime. Um, so like I mentioned, all over my body I use Factor 50 by Kiehl's, um, their activated sun protector ultra light sunscreen. This stuff is great, it doesn't leave that sort of um, grey, ashy colour on you, especially if you're of a darker skin tone. Most sunscreens can leave this really sort of iridescent film on you and this doesn't do that, which is why it's fantastic. For my face, I love Kane and Austin's ultra, ultra light um, weightless sunscreen. I'll just show you what this looks like because it's fantastic. It's literally like a milk. As you can see, it's a bit drippy, but it rubs into absolutely nothing. This is great for your face, especially if you are sort of prone to spots or you get oily quite quickly because it's weightless, it really is. If you haven't been so careful with your skin in the past, now is a great time to invest in a product that really tackles pigmentation, discoloration and sort of clusters of melanin that may be starting to form on your skin. Especially if you're of a darker complexion or you're Asian or ethnic in background, we suffer a lot with this sort of problem. So my personal favourite is Kiehl's Clearly Corrective Dark Spot Solution. Again, it's very lightweight. It comes with a little pipette. And the product itself is quite creamy and sinks in really, really quickly. You should see a difference with a product like this within three or four weeks um, as it starts to break down that pigmentation and discoloration. Another thing I love to do is really take care of my skin from the inside during the summer months and the winter months, but more so in the summer. A great way to do this is to take vitamin E capsules. Now, the great thing about these bad boys is they soak up lots of damage. You can actually take the capsule itself, pop a hole in it with a little pin or a safety pin and squeeze the contents of it onto your palms and rub it or pat it into your face at the end of the day. This is great for if you spent the whole day in the sun and your skin's feeling a little bit parched. Another great SPF uh, moisturiser to use for your face is Eve Lom's Daily Protection SPF 50+. Uh, again, it covers both UVA and UVB. It's really light. The one thing about this product is it has a quite a thick finish. It does sink in eventually, but if you have a more oily skin type, this is probably one to avoid. Instead of the Evelom, you can get away with this wonderful Clarins product. Now this is the Hydra Matte Lotion, um, called so because even though it's very, very thin and very hydrating, it's also ultra matte and it leaves your skin with a very matte finish. Makeup wise, I think if you use a good enough SPF, 
your foundation, your usual foundation, will sit on top of it properly and sink in if you maybe powder it in place. Um, if you like things a little bit lighter and you want to use maybe just a foundation with some SPF in it rather than a cream and then a foundation, Shiseido have a wonderful sun care range. Um, this is SPF 30. Um, but this is a liquid foundation and it's UV protective, so it's both UVA and UVB, which is fantastic. What to do if you do burn? Um, I would hope that you don't burn after watching today's video ever again, because these areas are really sensitive, like your, the bridge of your nose, the top of your cheeks, your forehead. If you've protected them properly, hopefully you shouldn't be in too much trouble. If you do burn, however, this is your saving grace. Aloe vera gel is probably the most comforting, wonderful thing you can use. As you can see, it's quite a thick, gloopy consistency. But don't rub it in too much. Um, leave a big, thick mask on your face for as long as you can. Try not to get it on your pillow and let that sink in. And it should, by the morning, you should feel much better. If you've spent all day in the sun and you're looking nice and tan, and hopefully you haven't burnt yet, um, you can do lots to take care of your skin once you come out of the sun. Um, because after all, a tan is actually a sign that your body sent pigment to the surface of your skin to protect itself from damaging UVA and UVB rays. It looks great, but it's actually a defense mechanism. When you come out, you can use After Sun. Um, this one's by Dr. Hauschka, and it's a moisturizing care which helps you prolong your tan. The better you look after your skin once you've finished in the sun, the longer your tan will last. So when you come home from the park or the beach, it's best to wipe everything off your face and give your skin some breathing space. Maybe with a, creaming, a creamy foamy cleanser or with a scrub, whatever you find best for you. But really get rid of all of the day's grime and dirt and some sand, anything that may be clinging to your skincare because let's face it, sunscreen is usually a bit of a pain in the bum. And let's get it all off and start again. When you're done, after sun is a great way to keep protecting and hydrating your skin to prolong your tan. So this one's from Dr. Hauschka. Amazing sound. And it's, um, it's rich and it's creamy and it really absorbs nicely and it smells fabulous. Everything from their ranges is very thoughtfully scented. So give your skin a good rub with the after sun. Um, and if you have burnt, like I mentioned, use the aloe vera gel. One thing about being in the sun for too long is that your lips can get really dry and cracked and your uh, eyelid skin can get very crepey and sort of start to feel like, like the paper that they pack gift bags with. So a great way to tackle this is to use my favourite, Elizabeth Arden's 8 Hour Protecting Cream. This stuff is fantastic. I'll just show you with this one actually. So the consistency of it is like a thick, gloopy orange colour. And it's very, very hydrating. So with the rest of this, if you're on the beach and whatnot, you can just pat it into your eyelids. It's a little bit shiny, but hey ho. And that just really helps to protect the skin, the delicate skin on your eyes and lips. Your lips don't actually have anything to help them protect themselves. They don't secrete any oils or anything, which is why they tend to get the driest, the quickest. So do as best you can to protect them. People always forget about their hair when it comes to the sun and how damaging it is. If you highlight your hair or you put blonde in it or have any sort of color in it, you'll notice how dry your hair gets after being in the sun or after the summer, how much you need to chop off the ends. So you can do a great deal to protect your hair. You can use a specifically formulated shampoo and conditioner. I love this, um, the sun range from Fito. They're fantastic. So they have a conditioner and a shampoo. Uh, a great tip is to actually run the conditioner through the ends of your hair, like the mid lengths to the ends of your hair, before you hit the beach. And it um, sort of serves as a leave-in conditioner and helps to form a barrier against the sea salt and the sand and the wind and the sun. Failing that, you can always don a really cute hat, which also helps to protect your forehead and your nose from the sun if you wear it properly. It's not just for style. So after you've taken care of your hair and your forehead, don't forget your eyes. They're very important. You only have two and you need to do as much as you can to protect them. So for me personally, I'm a big fan of a good pair of sunnies. Um, this pair actually have a reflective lens 
and they're really good at protecting you from UVA and UVB. But you must um, make sure when you buy a pair, you look to see whether or not they protect you from UVA and UVB. Because if not, they're just a piece of plastic with some colour and they're a bit useless. So try and give these a good shot. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please click the like button if you have and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave me any comments below if you'd like any further information or if I can help you with anything. I'll make sure all the products are listed as well below so you can find them easily in the box. And um, next week we'll talk you through how to enhance your tan with makeup, some great shades to wear with a tan. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.